Hi everyone and welcome to Triple M Adventures with Bill. This video is to help you set up a basic four channel plane in your Radio Master TX12. So let's take a look at the radio. First thing we need to do is hit the model button, go down to a spare slot and then hit the enter key and hold it down and then click create. Okay, we can click, pick plane, delta or multi. We're going to do a normal plane, so we click enter. Now, has uh, the plane got an, an engine? We're going to say yes, so we hit the forward button, forward page button. And now the ailerons, because I think most people will set a, a basic plane up with two, aileron, uh, two servos, one in each aileron. We're going to click enter, and we're going to change that. We just scroll down and click enter. But I'm going to change the assigned channels here. So this one is going to become five. Push enter. Now that is correct. I'm going to push the page button forward. Have we got flaps? In this model, we're doing a basic model, so no, we haven't. So we push forward. Air brakes? No, we haven't got those. Now we need to check our configuration of the elevator and the rudder, which this should be correct channel 2 and channel 4. Push enter. Now we can just ch check our channel mapping there. So it's throttle th is channel 3, aileron channel 1 and aileron channel 5. That is correct. Rudder channel 4 and elevator channel 2. Now we can long press and oops, we can just go back on that and our model then should be set up. Now we have our basic model, there's a few more things we need to do in the TX12. First, we need to give the model a name so that when we've got multiple models on there, we know which one we're going to use. And then we can go and have a look at the flight modes. We need to push the page button and we'll come up with the model name. Now, if we push the enter button. Now, to type anything in, what we need to do is scroll. So we're just going to call this plane. So I'm going to go across to... P. If I hold the enter button down, it will go to a capital. Now I'm going to go to L A N E. And now we can push return. Now we can go down to a timer because I'm not using a flight controller in this. So I wouldn't be getting any telemetry back. So let's say we're going to set a timer up. We are going to choose the option THS, which means that the timer will run when the throttle is pulled forward. So we push enter. And then I'm just going to put in, you'd have to test this with your plane. I'm going to put 10 minutes in there. Okay, and then we push return. We're going to go down. Persistent, we can put flight. And then we can do a minute countdown. So we can click that. So at the end of the timer, it will count down one minute, I think, and then it goes to uh, the last 10 seconds. Okay, countdown is silent. Let's change that by pushing enter, and we're going to say voice, so we will get a voice warning. Now let's move on to the flight modes. So we're going to push the page button, and there are the flight modes. So in flight mode one, I'm going to push enter, and this one I'm going to call armed. Okay, what's a daisy? And that's all we need to put in there is just armed. So we now will push return and we go to the second line. And in the second line, we're going to type in, push enter. We're going to put in there disarmed. Now this is important so that you don't accidentally arm your motor. So your prop goes whizzing around unintentionally. Now we push return. Oops, I've missed something out there, but it's easy to go back. You push enter, and then we need to go and allocate a switch to this, to that mode. So we're going to push, uh, we can, don't need to do it that way. I just want to show you that again. Let's just go, you just tap once, and then we move. I use this switch here, and it, in the forward position means it's armed. And this is switch E. So the arrow is showing, I say that's forward, so that would be armed now i need to bring it into the middle position to be disarmed and then we can push enter 
Now that's all we need to do on the flight modes. Now we can move on to the special functions. Now the special functions are where we can play sounds and we can reset our timer. So we're going to hit the page forward button and we're going to go to special functions. Then we're going to push enter. Again, there we go. And here we're going to select our switch. And in this case, it's going to play the sound, the, play the track arm. So I'm going to put my arm switch into forward and then push enter. I'm going to scroll across and then I'm going to pick play track. Not sound, but track. Push enter, go across, click, and now you can see you've got your options. Now these will only be there if you have your SD card in the radio. So we are going to go, this is armed, and then we can push return. So if I click the switch, Okay. So if I flick the switch, Armed. okay, now we can go, we're on the second line and you can hear the beeps now. I'm just going to turn the volume now and push enter once. And there, the next line we're going to set up is when it's in the middle position. Now we're going to go across, scroll across, push enter. And we're going to say play track. Whoops, a daisy, play track. And then this time we're going to pick disarmed, which is there, disarm. Okay, push, return, and come down. So now, armed, disarmed. So, armed, disarmed. Okay, next thing I'm going to do on this basic model is do the reset of the timer because you want to be able to reset it. So we're going to push enter again quickly. And then we're going to select, I'm going to use this D switch here, which is a momentary switch. I'm going to click it once, then click enter, scroll across, and then we're going to just pick the reset, reset timer, no, sorry, the reset option, beg your pardon. And then we're going to go and we're going to activate it. So you scroll across and push enter. And then we can return. So now if I'm, now I'm going to come back out and come to the opening screen. Now, if I start my throttle off, you'll see, okay, let's reset. So my timer is running. I can put it back, and if I push D, it resets. In the next part of the video, I'm going to show you how to set up a safe throttle. Now, this is necessary so that you don't accidentally arm your motor when you're carrying your radio. Now with a quadcopter, we normally have a flight controller in there, which takes care of this process. And sometimes in fixed wings, we put flight controllers in. But if you're not, then this will help you set up a safe throttle so you don't accidentally arm your motor. We now need to go back into the model menu and then push the page forward until we get to the curves. Now I'm not gonna explain this to you, but I'm just gonna show you what you need to do to be able to set up the safe throttle. So we push enter, we're going to call this cut. There we go. Let's return. Oops, I've got to go back in again. I came out. Okay, now we're going to go down to the cap points, five points, and we're going to click, and we're just going to change that to two. And then we're going to click enter again. And then we're going to go across to here, and you can see this is highlighted now. So if I push enter, I can scroll that down to the bottom. We want the Y to be a minus 100. Okay, and then we're gonna go across to the other one and click, and we're gonna scroll that one down to the bottom two. So in the end, you're gonna have point two and X, um, X equals 100 and Y equals minus 100. So that is your curve setup. Now let's move on to the logical switches. So we can hit the page button, logical switches. Now in here, we're gonna push enter. Now in the first logical switch, L01, we are going to click enter and we need to put in here, here A is smaller than X. 
and it's important to get these uh, correct. Now in V1, we need to put the throttle gimbal. Now you've got to make sure it's not this throttle here, not the input, but the gimbal. So, uh, where we go? There we go. No, wrong one. Sorry. Where's the throttle? There's the throttle. It needs to be the throttle. And then in V2, so A is V1 and X is V2. We need to put a minus 98. So there we go. And that is everything we need to put in the logical switch one. So we can push return. Now we go to logical switch two. And in here, we click enter. We need to put all. Then in V1, we need to select logical switch one. Logical switch one. And then in V2, we need to select logical switch two. Logical switch two. Then the, the end, the switch, we push enter. And this has got to be our arm switch forward, which our arm switch is this one. And there we go. So let's switch E forward. Now you can choose whichever one you like. Um, as long as you, um, each time you're setting this up, you use the same one. Okay, then we go on to duration, which is nothing, but we do need to put a delay in here. And I put a delay of a 0.5 of a second. Now I'm going to explain to you later why we put that delay in, which is what makes it a safe throttle. So that is the logical switches. Now we're on the final step, we need to put the inputs in. So we are going to push return and we are going to pick page back and we're going to go to our inputs. Oops, too far. Now we need to adjust the throttle here and change this. So we push enter and we say edit. Now in the first line, we must make sure our source is the throttle gimbal. And then we need to go down to the switch which is there. Now this must be logical switch, logical switch. And in this case, it's got to be L2. So we just need to do that. And now we can push enter. Now we have to insert another line. Now to do this, you hold down the enter button and you say insert after, and it will go straight into the edit screen. Now here, we are going to make sure we've got the right source, which is correct, is the throttle gimbal. Then we're going to get to scroll down to the curve. We push enter and we're going to change this to custom. Push enter, go across, and now you'll see the curve come up. We have the cut curve. And the final thing we need to do to set up our basic model is to go to the switch. Now here, we can go logical switches. Now. There is a logical switch which has an exclamation mark in front of it. That means not that uh, logical switch. So we have to go back up and we should start seeing all our switches in negative uh, with an exclamation mark. And we, in this case, we need to have exclamation mark logical switch two. Now we should be good to go. So we can return, return, Return. Now, after all those settings, let's take a look at the safe throttle working. We can do this on the actual radio. You'll be able to see that it is working. What we need to do is if we hit the page forward button, you'll see now we can see our gimbals. You can see the two channels that are operating our servos, the throttle channel there, our rudder and our elevator. So you can see that they're working. Obviously, we'd have to plug these into our plane and then get make sure we've plugged our server into the right port of the receiver. But we can do the basic test here. So now the I'm going to show you what the safe throttle. If we set this up correctly, we are armed there. If we disarm Disarmed. and we move the throttle, you can see the throttle is not working. Now, if we accidentally leave that up and we push armed, armed. 
You see the throttle, nothing happened and it won't. Until, and even if I go down quickly and back up, the throttle will still not work. If I come down, hold it there for less, uh, more than 0.5 of a second, now our throttle will start working. But if we want to, we have a problem in the air and we need to cut that off. We can, we can just do that and it's disarmed. So we can see that our radio is set up properly. Now let's take a look at the binding process where we bind our receiver to the transmitter. Now let's bind a receiver to our model. Now we're going to hit the model button and we're going to page across and then we're going to come to the setup screen. Now if we scroll up, we go to the bottom and here you can see, oops, very sensitive, there's the internal RF module. So we will push enter on that and then we go to multi, click enter. And here we need to choose the protocol that we want to use. Now this is a free sky and it will be, should be this one. So we click enter, we go down and then we're going to scroll V8. There we go. That's the one I want to use. And then we're going to go down. We can give the receiver a number um, so that what will happen then is if you put that receiver into another model, you just need to pick that number and you'd be, it would be bound. You wouldn't need to rebound it, uh, rebind it. But we're going to keep that as zero. And then we need to go over to our receiver, which is off screen, but I will show you that it's actually working. So we are going to plug in the receiver. So now what I need to do is push the bind button on my receiver and put power to the receiver. OK, we'll go into bind mode. And then we're going to come back to the radio and we're just going to go to here and click bind. There we go, we hear the beep. Now we should be good to go. It stopped, so I'm going to turn off the receiver. Turn the receiver back on and we should be good. You can probably hear everything working. So what I'm going to do is just pull over the my test rig to show you what has happened and the process you would have to do. So we haven't got flaps on this, but let's just go to the aileron. You can see we've only got one aileron working, and that is because the servo is plugged is not plugged into the correct port. So let's have a look at that. Good. Now, as you can see, I've now plugged the servos into the correct servo channels for the ailerons, but you can see they are working incorrectly. So let me pull the rig out the way. I'll bring the radio back and show you how to adjust this. Now let's have a look. So if I actuate the ailerons, you can't see them now, but the right aileron is going down. So that is going the wrong way. And the left aileron is going down, but that would be correct because that would make us uh, roll right. So we have to change one of the channels. Now that would be, I think, see it's a bit hit and miss sometimes. It should be this one. So we go, scroll down. So we're in the mixes. We go down, push enter and edit. And then you go down to the weight and the weight, we now have to make it a minus. Minus 100. Now let's try it. There we go. There we go, that's working. So you can see that on the screen. I've changed that to minus 100. Let's just hit return. Okay. And I'm going to bring the test rig back in so you can have a look. And if you watch the earlier, I'm using the uh, stick right. There we go. And the right aileron is coming up, left aileron going down. So that would uh, roll to the right and then roll to the left. So you may need to do this on your elevators and your rudder, but it's just a matter of changing the weight from either, a, normally they are positive, and then change it to a negative. And this is important, but you must always check your plane before you fly it anyway to make sure all your control surfaces are working in the correct sense. Thanks for watching this video. And if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you really enjoyed it, please subscribe to my channel. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section below because I'd love to hear from you. And please share this video with your friends. And please consider becoming a Patreon of my YouTube channel because it would really help me out. Thanks for watching. Happy flying. Bye for now. Bye bye.